The Fine Fine AM8 is one of the best budget microphones of our time, but it has one fatal flaw. The highs can sound fatiguing and piercing over a long period of time. So we are going to fix that with EQ. And by the way, if you're new to the channel, my name is Dave Soltura, and I'm a voice actor who's worked with clients across 78 countries, all from my professional studio in the Philippines. I've been the voice for Talking Tom, Hank, Ben, and Roy for Talking Tom Shorts since late 2019, and I've voiced commercials for companies like McDonald's, Grab, Tic Tac, and Mountain Dew. Let's get this started. So the first thing you need to do is to head on over to tokyodon.net slash tdr dash nova. And once you're there, you can download this free EQ app and use one of the installers. There is the paid version called the TDR Nova GE or Gentleman's Edition. The paid version does have more bells and whistles, but most people don't need them. Okay, once you've downloaded the plugin, it's time to open your audio software, also known as your digital audio workstation, or DAW for short. So this one I'm using is Reaper. You can also use this on, on Audacity. I have tested it there and it definitely works. But yeah, if you're using Reaper, uh, your interface might look a little different. But what I would do is look for that red button over there with the FX. Once you find that, click on that. And you are going to find, well, see, I already have TDR Nova added, but let me remove that. You would click on Add over there you will see your plugins and just type TDR Nova and it pops up. I would choose VST3 right there. You can use uh, Reaper's built-in EQ. You can use OBS's built-in built EQ. Even Audacity has its own built-in EQ, but I find that those EQs tend to be a bit more clinical or digital in terms of their effect. But TDR Nova is a bit more musical, so to speak, such that it kind of emulates an anal analog sound a bit closer, just a, just a bit more. So now we're using TDR Nova, and now we have that interface on. As you can see, as I move this around, you're going to hear, oh, you're not going to hear anything just yet. I'm going to turn the EQ on, and you can hear that my voice is changing. Okay. So, how are we going to EQ the Fine Fine AM8? Personally, this is how I would do it. The first thing, we need a high pass filter, classic, and we are going to drag this to about 80 hertz. You see this value over here? You can actually just double click that and type 80 and hit enter. And what that does is it moves over here and removes all of that unnecessary low-end rumble and it even helps with plosives plosives see i do still have those popping peas but they they aren't as harsh pesky peas perpetuate problematic plosives see that's yeah it's it's pretty mitigated let me turn this off pesky peas pesky peas pesky peas huh, well the am8 was pretty good to begin with in terms of plosive management but there you go this imp improves that as well because plosives tend to be low-end information. <laughs> One more thing here, the high-pass filter is called a high-pass filter because it lets the highs pass. It lets the high-frequency information pass through, whereas the lows are being cut off or they're being rolled off. And so we're removing that, and that really helps with the plosives. Pesky peas perpetuate problematic plosives. Now, the thing here is we do know that the Fine Fine AM8 has a frequency response of 50 hertz to 16 kilohertz. So what we're going, going to do is, you see there's a lot of excess information here. Let's hit this low pass filter button. And you see now what this does is the reverse of the high pass filter. It lets the lows pass and gets rid of the highs. So we're going to start shaving off some of the unnecessary top end information. And so somewhere around here, this isn't really necessary and could just add a tiny bit of cleanliness to the audio. Let me turn this off. Okay, you may not hear it, but on my high end, DT770 Pro headphones, I can hear a tiny bit of grain being removed from the audio. This might be a bit aggressive, so I would uh, just roll off starting maybe 15 kilohertz or 16 kilohertz or so, just to remove 
that unwanted high-end noise. The next thing that I would do, well, normally I might add a bit of low-end warmth somewhere at around 100 hertz or so, like this. But personally, I think the Fine Fine AM8 sounds great the way it is, especially when you're just kind of hugging the mic, being very close to the microphone. Maybe if you are far, you do want to, you know, compensate for that distance and add a bit of that low-end information, but I really wouldn't do that. I would start with a proper mic placement to begin with, so I'm not really going to do any boosting right here. Instead, what I would do is I would look for the woolly quality of the Fine Fine AM8 Take note, if we remove this pop filter, it doesn't sound as woolly. So there, this pop filter is definitely still adding a woolly quality to the audio. Let's put it back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to look for the woolly audio. And, you know, that tends to be somewhere between 100 and 500 hertz, just the, the muddy, boxy sections of... EQ, and what I have found is surprisingly, for some reason, the woolly texture, let me remove this EQ gain feature over here, and what this EQ gain button does is, as you're doing the EQ, it kind of lowers or adjusts your volume, because when you are adjusting EQ, you are essentially adjusting volume at different frequencies. So let me turn that off, I just want to hear where it sounds a bit woolly, and yeah, I'm beginning to hear it somewhere, somewhere over here. This is actually not that bad, but for some reason, I'm hearing, yeah, the, uh, somewhere around here, I'd say, somewhere, yeah, and to my ear, around the 1K region is what is least clear, and that tends to be a honkier sound around 1K. Check, 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 check. Check, 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 So I would cut at around 1K ever so slightly. It makes sense because this foam isn't exactly the thickest foam. Now we can try to do a little bit of a before and after right there, before and after. Okay, the changes might seem pretty minimal so far, but we're going to do something pretty drastic right now. So I'm going to grab this band and drop this little notch over here. I'm going to make this a bit narrower. And we are going to drop the frequencies between 5K and 10K. And I would go so far as to drop this much. And that might seem pretty extreme, but the thing with fine, fine microphones, and even Mayono microphones, they usually like adding this treble boost in the presence and air regions somewhere around 5 to 10k and 10k onwards. And I saw the frequency response curve for the K688, and it was pretty drastic. I couldn't find the curve for the AM8, but now I'm just trusting my ears, and if you listen now, doesn't this sound way more neutral compared to this. Like if we drop this right here, if we hit the bypass, sizzling sibilance sends sharp sounds. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Sizzling sibilance sends sharp sounds. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Now if you heard that the way that I did, it tamed the highs by a lot. All we're doing here is neutralizing the fatiguing and artificial high-end information that Fine Fine has added to the Fine Fine AM8. So if you're listening now without dropping the high-end information, yes, it is much clearer, it is capturing more of the fine details, 
but over a longer period of time, this is going to be very fatiguing. I know that I'm not alone in this, and a lot of people have been leaving comments on this channel talking about how fatiguing the Fine Fine and Mayono highs tend to be. Dare I say it, not even the Shure SM7B sounds this articulate. This is too much. But both are dynamic microphones, so there's definitely a lot going on in here to compensate with that artificial high-end information. So what we can do is to drop this region over here, and you can still hear with a minus 3 dB cut, you see this is minus 3 over here, with a minus 3 dB cut over this range, well, let me make this a bit narrower, it sounds more neutral, but still clear leaning. But as we drop this by 6 dB, it begins to sound like a darker microphone. Almost like a fine, fine K688, but with a bit more detail. And if we really want to go really dark, we can drag this low pass filter down even more. And this begins to sound like a darker broadcast sound with a pinch of articulation left behind. Now, I wouldn't go this far. I think this is lacking in too much high-end information. So really, you could adjust this 10 to 20K uh, low pass filter to taste. And depending on the quality of your voice and how nasal you might get and how much sibilance you might introduce, you might want to play with moving this band between minus 6 dB and minus 3 dB for a clearer sound. But let's go back to minus 6 dB. Hi, it's Future Dave here, and I'm excited to announce my brand new course, Creator Audio Tactics, Sound Better on Any Budget. I made this course because the most common type of comment that I get on this channel is, hey Dave, do you have a mic recommendation for such and such situation? And while I try to respond when I'm able, the channels reach this point where I'm unable to give an answer for everyone's very specific needs. But with Creator Audio Tactics, which is on pre-order for just $5, you can have a practical understanding of audio so you can choose the best mic that suits your preferences, including how the mic looks. The course will show you how to optimize your audio on any budget and help you avoid overspending on gear. I once spent $800 for a mic setup that made me sound like a tin can, and the course teaches you how to avoid mistakes like that. The price will go up to $7 to $17 once the course is out, so make sure to take advantage of the pre-order price. Just check the link down below and I'll see you in the course. Okay, so I finessed the EQ a bit more. First, we're going to play this without EQ and then with EQ. You are hearing me speak into the Fine Fine AM8 in XLR mode. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. You are hearing me speak into the fine fine AM8 in XLR mode. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So I hope you noticed that the high frequencies were less harsh while remaining clear and articulate. If we go over here where there's a bit of room tone, let me play that with and without EQ. I hope you heard that the high-end noise became even less distracting. Cutting the EQ at around 5k as well is going to reduce the sibilance in your voice. And if you've noticed, all of the EQ we've done here today is just subtractive. Sometimes instead of adding too much sugar, it's just better to remove salt. Hope you like this quick tutorial and I want to take this time to thank these incredible people. Thank you. And I really appreciate all the support of the members of this channel. You guys help me keep making more content. And thank you to all the subscribers of the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button down below. And if you like videos like this, make sure to check out this video.